What is up guys, Spee here, and in today's video we're looking at Game Leap Discord members replays. Now, I do not often take a lot of replays, you have to understand guys, that is a service I provide to students who pay me directly for coaching, just letting you know. However, the big idea here is that on the Game Leap Discord, occasionally I'm talking to members, I'm answering questions, just having banter, but for today I decided to do something a little bit different, a little bit special, and I took whoever was on their replays and, and making a video out of it. So if you're interested in having this happen to you in the future, I recommend you go on the Game Leap Discord and hopefully you get lucky. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. Game Leap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential, but for now, let's hop into the video. But I'm getting into the video, we're going to be doing a brief analysis of each player. I'm not going to be looking too much into depth about the specific gameplay, but more so about what I think will help them as a player if they can focus on it. So yeah, probably two to three minute clips for each player, and there's around five to six replays. We'll see how that goes though, usually I get carried away a bit, but regardless, we're looking at a bull of bear on the Viper. Now, first off, I do not like your items. I think if you're going early game items as an offlane Viper, you want as many stats as possible because your hero is weak in lane. I'd probably trade out the circlet for three branches because then I can later turn it into a wand, which is really nice on Viper, and it's very good for the landing stage. So yeah, I'd probably buy that over the circlet because I don't think rushing a Wraith Band is even a slightly good idea uh, in the offlane because you don't want to have to ship out a recipe in the early game. It's pretty awkward, so it's best to buy as many effective items as possible. Um, moving on though, I already am kind of sketched because honestly guys, Viper is one of the weakest laners in Dota. This hero is just naturally awful in late. Uh, a bull of bear? What was that? <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No flame, but like, what? <laughs> Hopefully you guys get this kill. No. Oh, okay, good. I don't recommend you take another toxin at level one. It's very, very underwhelming because it's hard to actually keep anyone in it unless your goal is to push out the lane, which is, it's okay, but it costs so much mana. It's 70 mana level one, and that's a lot for a spell that you're going to be using pretty often if you actually skill it. So yeah, for the most part, I recommend you try out a different hero on the off lane to start. Like heroes like Leshrac, Pugna are much better because they can actually keep tempo. However, what I will say about Viper is you can actually play him as, as an AFK farmer, which I hope you do because I know your team has a bunch of AFK farmers as is, but I believe this is a what is it, legend. Yeah, so you can, you can become a, a third core. You can easily have three cores at this point. So I recommend you do that for the most part, but yeah, don't take another toxin. It's just so bad. Uh, level one. It, it's really, it's just really bad. And then uh, you instantly buy a, you can't do this. You can't do this if you're trying to win the laning stage. You can't just buy a Wraith Band recipe at a minute. I hope, I, I, I genuinely hope you do not ship, ship the courier a minute in with your Wraith Band recipe. What should you do instead, guys? What's the better answer? If you're spending 200 gold on a Wraith Band recipe, what could you realistically spend 200 gold on that wins you the laning stage? There's a special item that actually he has queued up and it's called Magical Stick. One of the best items in Dota, if not the best. So yes, please buy this item. You have a Skywrath against you spamming spells and a hero like Ember Spirit who's gonna slight fairly often. Please, please buy a stick. Now, honestly, just moving ahead here, you obviously fall very far behind in the landing stage. And at this point, you're getting run at and you might be like, well, what am I doing wrong? Honestly, dude, as sad as this is to say, Viper is just so bad in the offlane. At this point in the game, I would basically just go full-time jungle because your hero has 800 HP, very poor disengage, if not any. Like, I guess you can consider gr corrosive skin disengage, but like, other than that, you can't pressure your lane hard unless you max your, your Q and your E, which actually if I'm playing Viper in the off lane, I'm probably going to do that, not my Nether Toxin, so I can actually have impact in lane. It's actually fairly decent if you take your Q and your E. You can actually pressure pretty hard, but other than that, yeah, it, like this is just not how you want to play Dota. You're not pressuring lane and you're not increasing efficiency, so what are you really doing? You're just kind of like chilling, which yeah, is okay if you're some safe laner who's going to come online later, but based upon what I'm guessing what your playstyle is, because the majority of legends, what they make the mistake of as an off lane is no matter what their hero is, they just go run around and try to kill people. If you do that as Viper, you're going to just become squishy. You're just going to have zero items late game, even though you're one of the fastest farmers in Dota. And we'll see what happens. Right now, you're, you're doing some flash farming. Um, decent attempt on the side pull. But for the most part, I'd rather see you just start to make stacks and, and try to increase your own efficiency because you're not shutting anyone down at this point. Like, side pulling is just kind of meh. You really need to be playing for efficiency. You should be buying clarities or mangoes. I see you're buying mana boots, which is okay. But really, like, you're just being inefficient. You're just walking around for so much. I'd rather see you there to take a to take a camp and then walk back to lane. You know what I mean? All I'm saying is, if you're playing Viper in any role, your hero is no longer this, like, run at you, run around 
pressure hero. It's more so like a like a farmer that comes online around like the 15 minute mark type of deal. So yeah, honestly, I don't have too much to say. For you, you need to, if you're going to play Viper, you need to try to get more XP. Ask your, your position forward to give you more XP, like stat of XP range. And then focus more on pushing out the lane and taking a jungle cap. Buy a lot of regen also to sustain that. Clarity's mangoes, as I said, even salves if you have to. Uh, kind of like this, right? Kind of like this. However, you have to do that earlier and then, I don't know, play it mid. Like, you could do everything you're doing mid and just do so much better because... This is just slow. You're level 8 at 13 on a flash farmer. There's really nothing for me to say besides chill in lane, get your farm up, and, and hopefully snowball and carry the game later on. Because even if I watch the rest, it's like, not that it's pointless by any means. Like, there's still things to talk about. But having 79 CS at 17 minutes is like the only issue you need to worry about right now. This number has to be like 130, 120 right now if you want to win these games and gain MMR. Only because that's what your hero does. Right, guys? So remember, I'm not saying this because I think you want to AFK farm on every hero. I think yesterday's video, if I'm not mistaken, it was about Topson and how he just ran around and had like 60 CS for 14 minutes. But his playstyle, it justified it, right? His playstyle justified it. This playstyle where you're just like kind of walking around and like sort of fighting, but sort of not staticking and farming around your team it just doesn't work so hopefully you kind of get the main gist we're going to move on to the next replay if you have any questions in the discord of bull bear because you are always in there you know feel free to hit me up and, and ask all right next up on the list we got lugia on the mid phoenix i'm actually a huge fan of mid phoenix i really love playing this hero in the mid lane i've done it a few times and it feels really good um, because you can use the fire spirits to mess with people's cs but regardless let's look at what you do right and wrong however uh, when I was looking, you did indeed go 15 and 2 and 24, which makes me feel like uh, you did pretty well at the least, but you know, it's your boy speed, so I'm still gonna find mistakes. Alright, I just watched the first wave and I'm rewinding, but ah, dude, uh, use your spells, guys. I feel like I've said this in a gajillion videos. If you are a mid lane player, I do not care what spell you have. It could be tag team on Tusk, if you're playing mid Tusk. It does not matter. We could go down the list. Abaddon, Q, I don't care. Use a spell to secure the range creep. Do not 50-50 it if you don't have to. Some heroes have to, right? If you're an SF with souls level, you're going to have to 50-50 it. But as Phoenix, you have fire spirits. At least try to grief his attack speed. But instead, this aggro's and yours, you just 50-50 it. Don't 50-50 it. Use your fire spirits. Also, you're going way too far away from it, obviously. And you get your first range creep denied. Use your spells and focus on the range creep. If you're aggroing, it is the creep that's going to die first in a lot of games. Please, guys. So really, you have to hear me out on that because, uh, I mean, you just can't do that. Now you use fire spirits here and, like, it's fine by all means. You're going to grief the CS. I wish you tried to deny it under tower. It's really easy to deny under tower, guys. You should always be trying. Uh, or at least grief the CS. You don't actually have to get the deny. But, like, I really would have preferred to use your fire spirits in the first wave uh, to secure those key CS that are going to get you, you know, to your level 3 first. Other than that, honestly, just, like, quickly looking through your first wave, I think you've done a pretty good job. One thing I would I would maybe consider if I'm playing Phoenix is potentially buying a Bassy. It just seems like a good idea to me because you could really push in the wave extremely hard. If you have Bassy and you fire spirit the wave, you could instantly just shove your opponent under tower and really go heavy aggressive. Also here, I think you should be manning up quite a bit. Okay, he was trying to kill yourself. <laughs> Yikes. But regardless, no, pretty good mechanics overall. So, uh, laning stage, at least against Invoker, is not too bad. Now, Invoker is one of the easier heroes to lane against, by all means. By any standard, the, the hero is not very good early on, especially Quas Exhort. It just doesn't it doesn't do anything particularly well. But regardless, let's move on and see kind of see what you, what's, what's either good or bad about your rotations. One thing I want to say that kind of confuses me a bit here is that you have the Invoker in a pretty good spot, right? You also have a Fairy Fire and your two Nulls compared to his items, which aren't, aren't much worse by any means. But... I feel like if you hit him with the fire spirits here, you can man up. Like, you should be autoing him here much harder. Like, I'm pretty sure you actually you kill him if you man up here. Um, so it's a bit weird that you're being so hesitant. I, I don't know if it's just a lacking of understanding of your hero, but he definitely dies if you hit him with another spirit and a dive here. So, like, also with another two auto attacks, which you could have gotten in if you went aggressive. So that, honestly, I can't teach you that. You just have to, under like, try to go a bit more aggressive when you have your opponent's low and, and begin to understand, like, when you can kill them. Because you could have killed them there. I like, there's nothing else for me to say. You just didn't go for it when you could have. Okay, one thing I don't recommend for the most part is Trunkle Boots. I understand how they work with Phoenix. Like, I get it. It's actually not that bad, to be honest. I, I totally, I fully understand why you buy them. So I'm not going to hate on it too much because I actually do see the value in it. But at the same time, the Veil is just so good. Like, if you can get to this Veil early, you can solo kill anyone. Um, but once again, yes, I do fully understand why you... Oh, you're dead. Um, I do fully understand why you buy it. I just want to briefly point out to where your item build kind of hinders you here. You know, you're fighting this bottom rune at the 10 minute mark, which actually I think is really, really good. But like, 
the the issue is here because you don't have enough damage to kill this Bloodseeker. I mean, you really messed up here, to be honest. Like, one thing that you have to fix, bro, is your spell casting and, and your ability to, like, attack in between it because it's really hurting you. You know, when you go for this kill, you have to be make sure you're prioritizing, like, splitting up your fire spirits and, and only using them when you're, you know, your opponent's not burning anymore because here... Uh, like this is fine it's good by all means because you have eggs egg there's a very low chance you actually mess up and die here thankfully he missed maledict or else maybe there is a chance you die because you get hit by this blood right but like regardless you go on the the witch doctor and then you double in like you just double fire spirit him you can't do that like like that's gonna be the difference between getting the kill or not you know like accidentally double fire spiriting him and i know it's picky but like guys when you're trying to go up an mmr you just have to be really critical on yourself you have to be able to spread these out and hit the blood seeker because that he's your main kill like who cares about killing the witch doctor it, it's okay it's good but it's much less important than killing this guy and then i mean here you're you're so defensive with your ulti they already committed their spells right you know they have no blood right you know that this guy used his cask and his maledict he has nothing why are you going so defensive right like why would you even fly this far away and egg here they used everything they're not going to be able to man up. Your Pudge is in position. Your Skyrath has, has nukes. Like, this is just way too defensive. And some of it's just experience from Dota. But, like, a lot of your, your issues actually in this early game were, like, a lack of ability to know when to man up or not. Which sounds really weird, but it almost ruined you in a couple scenarios. And I would imagine that in certain games, it's going to hurt you harder and harder. Especially if you don't do well in the lane. Like, you did well in this lane. But honestly, I don't think a lot of, like... Your spellcasting lane was pretty good. It's a it's a good first start, but there's quite a bit of issues with your spellcasting that you need to look into, right? Just try to watch your own replays and be like, hey, I'm really messing up on my spells here and here. What can I do to fix that? <laughs> oh, good lord! I've seen this. I've seen this Phoenix Orchid build before. I have. I have. There's this guy named like Bird or something who does this thing where he goes like Orchid Nullifier on Phoenix, and it's just so weird. I don't know if it's good or not, but like. I mean, why are you taping out? Okay, you have no egg, never mind. Is this good? Like, maybe you could let me know or ping me in the Discord. I genuinely don't know. Like, it's just so weird to buy Orchid on Phoenix when I feel like it's just much better to buy something like Shiva's. But I do understand the raw DPS you get from it, right? Obviously, because the tick and the 30% damage at the end of it. Right? It's going to do, you know, quite a bit of damage to the Bloodseeker here. <sighs> don't know if I'm a fan, though. I feel like it's just better to go something like Radiance, but you could tell me otherwise. I'd be happy to know what you think. It is obviously extremely good for killing people like this Invoker, who have no Dispel for a while. Also, the Bloodseeker, he actually does have a BKB. Not great against Tide, of course. I'm not sure how I feel about this, though. I, I think it's better if you just kind of go a bit more standard. Like, I'm, I'm cool with your Phoenix gameplay in general. I think one thing you lack a little bit is the ability to push out some waves, but you're getting a lot of kills, so it's not the end of the world. Your biggest mistakes is you need to learn how to apply your aggression. You're actually doing a pretty good job of hitting your spells in the lane, but... You need to make sure that you're combining this with like proper right clicks and ability to identify kills as well as slightly better regen management. It actually was pretty good for the most part, so I'm not going to I'm not going to complain, but just keep this in mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, Arcana. All right, all right, all right. I've been talking to Arcana the Chariot lately. All right. Actually, I just want to make a point. Lately, I or ever, I have never really been one to say you just have to focus on all of your mid mechanics. Like sometimes the way to improve is just to understand that everything Every fundamental you have, spell casting, last hitting, positioning, when you hit your opponent, regen management. Sometimes the easiest way to improve in Dota is just only focus on that. Everything else does not matter. Just make sure you are getting high CS in lane, harassing your opponent at the right time, buying the right items, and casting your spells at the right time. Everything else does not matter because frankly, dude, you are way off in these compartments, uh, in, in these parts of the mid lane. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm not saying that to make anyone feel bad. But where's your healing self? Where's your healing self? You're not buying a healing self. Uh, no, I don't care that you're against the Zeus. It doesn't change anything. You need it because if you want to go aggressive, which your skill build later implies that you want to go aggressive, you have to have a healing self. I even if you get a kill, you need it to heal up so that when they respawn, you're not on zero HP. It's either that or you kill yourself. But I mean, regardless, like all I have to say, dude, is you just got to clean up your mechanics. Like... <laughs> It's kind of that simple, right? Obviously here, I mean, I have an issue with your first lane, similar to the Phoenix, like, what's going on, guys? I've preached this for every mid-video in existence. Secure the range creep. You have your, your shockwave. Secure the range creep. What's going on? No get. How do you just let him deny it? He missed it. Oh my god, he missed. The Zeus missed. Oh, guys, you can't go up in MMR. I, I'm hearing complaints, like, just, just all around me. It's like I'm in a room of complaints right now. And all I'm thinking to myself is, how in the world can you make any excuse when... And don't don't go making fun of this Magnus, guys, because you all look the same. You saw the 1v1 video I made? 
All right, guys, you see that? There's a reason because I focused and I focused on improvement for so long that I can beat seven of you in a row and not everyone was bad or low MR, all right? There is a reason for that. Please focus on fundamentals. You can guarantee wins and really focus on improving in Dota just by looking at your landing stage because frankly, dude, you can't miss four last hits in 49 seconds. You can't. If you want to gain MR, you can't miss four CS in the first wave. It's not allowed. You just lose. You might as well break your items right now. I would if I was you. But regardless, moving on to the point, obviously you have some issues with last hitting. Zeus denied you, even though you're a, a hero with 70 damage plus a Quelling Blade, which is basically 94 damage. I don't know what to say, man. I'm going to have to keep flaming you, but I want it to help you, right? I'm saying this to help you. Because same thing here. If you want to go aggressive on the Zeus, good nuke to secure the creep there. But if you want to go aggressive on the Zeus, you need to be high HP, correct? So the stick is wonderful. Right, I'm glad you bought a magic stick, but you need things like mangoes, you need things like salves if you're trying to play this lane aggressive and secure creeps, because frankly, you can't keep getting denied by Zeus. You can't win, like, or, or it's going to be harder to win. Wait, don't you win this game? No, you lost. Okay, but a lot of it comes down to the laning stage. And then moving on here, you put your third point into uh, Skewer. Why? Why do you have a third point? Why, why is Skewer level 2? Why? Who's done? Has anyone ever done this? I mean, call me out if like some pros done this and like there's a good reason for it. Like the only thing I could see is it's good for getting kills if you can secure them under tower. But like I'd rather nuke the Zeus with a level two shockwave and be able to secure creeps reliably and then skewer him with a level one skewer to secure the kill. It's a lot more reliable and consistent than this. I don't know, man. It just feels weird how you're playing the lane, right? Especially if you're going to go the skewer build, I'd at least like to see you rush boots, even though that's usually not a good thing. If, you're, if your only game plan is to play like this, which is I'm going to try to skewer him under tower, which maybe it's not, but like that's what your skill build implies. So if it's not, then your skill build's off. Like there's things are just not aligning here. You know what I mean? There's just not things aligning. And okay, I'd really like to see you get aggressive here. I actually don't remember what happens. I did watch this mostly through, but... Um, the wave is under your tower, so you should be looking for a kill. Uh, you're going to have to stick, though. Okay, don't go... Like, like you should be making him feel safe right now if you're trying to kill him. Because, basically, you don't want to run at him. Because then he's going to feel like, oh, this guy's trying to kill me. You want to make it kind of kind of a secret. And then here, you can do the technique where you can pull them back with shockwave and then bring them under tower. But you auto-attack, which creates a big gap. I mean... <sighs> uh, what is Zeus doing? What is he doing? Why would he walk back? And, ah! <laughs> what dude he like he couldn't have made that any easier for you i'm sorry that i'm being meaner than the other replays like I, there's just like i'm saying this to help you hopefully you can see that if you just focus on like getting down the skewer into shockwave pattern you'll do so much better or if you just genuinely focus on maxing in power uh, and then and increasing CS, you're going to do so much better. This whole outplay Dota is so unreliable until you were much better at Dota. It's just so unreliable. Guys, like, like you're running out of Zeus here who has a DD. He can legitimately kill you right now. He could have killed you if you manned up. Like, do you understand you should have died there? That's all I'm trying to say. You should have died, even if you skewered him. He could have just bolted you. He could bottle through your auto attacks and hit you for 150 damage. You lose. But this is the thing about this bracket, guys. You need to focus on, on one thing at a time. So if you're a mid laner right now and you're watching this, focus on one thing and one thing only to start your improvement. You can't learn everything at once. So wh where do you start? Focus on getting high CS. I've said it a million times and I still mean it. If you are trying to improve, you have to start somewhere. Start with CS. You can't have 20 at 5 minutes on Magnus against Zeus. Like, it's not even that bad. It's really not that bad. But a lot of this has just been really sketch. And now, also, if I skip ahead, there's no chance your CS catapults forward because you have this build, right? The only thing your build is good for is, like, killing one person. You kill Zeus. whoop de doo You know what I mean? Like, like legitimately, I... Whoop de doo is all I have to say. And now you're dude, you're buying a Midas? How do you buy Midas, but you're not mashing in power? Like what's your what's your job this game? You're going a skill build that's meant to run around and make plays, and then you're buying a Midas? Make up your mind. It doesn't make any sense. You have to combine everything has to align in Dota if you're trying to win. Things need to align. In that Topson video of the Pangalier, he bought items that align with this playstyle, guys. You can't like if I'm playing Dota and I have to go the skill builds and item builds that you guys play, I like I legitimately would drop 2k MMR just based on that. Do you understand how important it is to like align these things? Things like last hits and that are so easy to like to, to focus on to improve. <sighs> Let's move on.
All right, next replay, we got Eris on the Bloodseeker. Thank you for submitting. And actually, apparently, this was your friend. The person who submitted this is your friend, so hi, friend. First things first, I'm glad you're buying a Coiling Blade. One thing I will say is that I recently laned with a very high MMR, like a Reg 14 Bloodseeker spammer. And he took his first point of blood right. It allows you to secure range creeps very reliably and harass your opponent. This spell is broken. It's 125 pure damage, pure. On a 12 second cooldown for 70 mana, it is broken. Legitimately broken at level 1. It's just so, so good for laning. Okay, the second thing. I can't see. Please move your camera down. Like, I don't know what else to say. I can't see. Like, I want to know if the sniper is going to go for the last hit. When I'm trying to beat someone in terms of last hitting, I'm looking at their animation and their body language, as weird as that sounds. Uh, to, to try to read last hits. So like, uh, you had to hit that earlier. Okay, regardless. Um, yeah, like, please move your camera down. I can't see. Like, I don't know what else to say, guys. This is applies for every stage of the game. Like, if you're team fighting, do this too. Like, I can't see. But yeah, regardless, like, moving on to this, this range creep coming up here, it's very important that you have your blood right to actually nuke it out. Now, you're gonna get the CS anyway, um, but it actually can be very dangerous against actually good lanes. You are indeed landing against a sniper punch, which is very, very weak early on. Uh, <laughs> so lucky you, but regardless, the blood right is super good for securing uh, last hits and denies. So, yeah, I recommend it. Honestly, I don't have too much to say about your laning stage. I can tell that you're just not paying any attention to your opponents. It's the reason you just got hooked a second ago and you didn't even eat a tango when you were 300 HP, which is okay because you have Bloodseeker heals, but it's also bad at the same time because if they can kill you, that's the time they're going to kill you. They theoretically can't um, because they're sniper punch, but as I said, like it's going to punish you in other lanes. Oh god, what is punch doing, dude? Guys, if you're playing punch, just don't do that. Just don't just stand on the side and throw useless hooks. Like... They can even see him. Like, it's just embarrassing. Moving on, I do not recommend you rush a Wraith Ban on Bloodseeker. This is one of those heroes where I think it's very important to get your phase boots extremely early. Similar to Jug, like, you can buy Wraith Bans, and it's not bad by any means. But at the same time, like, it's really nice to get these phase boots early on that give you 18 damage that synergizes very well with your Thirst tech speed, right? And for that reason, I, I really, really keep that in mind. Like, hey, I need damage. I want this armor. And, and everything that phase boots gives you enables you to be able to run at the enemy and fight, which is nice. Wraith bands are okay. They clog up your slots considering you should be buying a magic wand. Magic wand is the run at you item. If you're trying to make outplays and fight early on, you want a magic wand. And Bloodseeker very often does want to do that. So I highly recommend you buy a stick at the side shop. Um, and upgrade it to a wand later on because it is very important for Bloodseeker. But yeah, then once again, dude, you're full mana. It's four minutes in, you haven't casted a single spell. And I know you've casted your Q and your Blood Right. So I guess it's not really a fair argument for me to make because, you know, you haven't even had your W for that long. But like even here, I'd really like to see you just, you know, cast it and, and maybe try to get some, some chip damage on Sniper. But I couldn't see the Sniper for the entire landing stage. That's a problem. I don't know what else to say. I can't see. And I know I've said this twice or three times now, but it's just so important because... How can you know to blood right your opponent? How can you know when he's going to try to deny you or if he's out of position and you need to go on him? How do you know? You don't is the answer. Hey, hit this guy. Okay, that blood right was bad, right? Why was it bad? There's only one way this punch can run. He's not going to run back up. If he runs back up, you kill him because uh, unless he TPs, you kill him. So he's not going to run far away, right? He's not going to run. He's not going to run up because then at least you'll build a lot of thirst. So cast this in front of him. Also, you can body block him to make sure that he, he gets hit. Uh, I believe he gets hit anyway. No, he doesn't. And so, yeah, I mean, you could have killed him there. If you casted the blood right in front of him and attacked move properly, you get the kill. Basically, just to point it out, what you should do is you cast it here, right, to block him out of the, the retreat path. And then your auto attacks need to start. That actually wasn't that bad. But after you move, after you move, it has to be kind of like here, right? It has to be up. Not not this way. How, if you're trying to kill someone walking down, your movements after you auto attack have to be down as well. Not to the left or, or to the right. But yeah, that guy basically could have died there. So yeah, like you're really not paying any attention to your enemy and that has to be your next state. Your CS is pretty solid. It's not perfect by any means. It's, it's good enough though, in my opinion. Uh, the thing is your next step as a player, what rank is this? Crusader? Yeah, your next step has to be able to pay more attention to your opponents because you're not paying any attention. You guys could actually like crush the sniper this lane if you work together to hit him. I'm very serious. Like if you and the silencer communicated even slightly, like or just cast your spells on the sniper, you actually crush him. Like just just like spam blood right on him with the silencer Q. And if you can get the hits all, like if you get good at hitting it, you're gonna crush your lane. Like you're gonna actually beat your opponent. And you kind of combine that with your good last hitting, and you'll be in. So yeah, that that's kind of that's kind of really what you need to work on as a player. Oh boy, you're buying Radiance next. All right, though. I don't know if you actually buy this. Obviously, you get ganked here and you really messed up your spellcasting. <laughs> Sounds are out. Um, but when you're getting gone on from the right, you should be running up. Like, obviously, they see you here, but you should still be running up to the trees because oh, you got tracked, unfortunate. Uh, you hesitated there. Eh. 
Yeah, all right, you're dead. You have to cut through these trees here. Cut, cut, cut. Ah, quelling, quelling. Ah, okay, you do. Ah, all right, you're still dead, though. All right, you could have lived there if you played it a bit better, but that's all right. Moving on, though, I mean, the only thing I have to say is you're supposed to crush this sniper in lane. He's supposed to basically be level, like, 4 right now, um, but he's level 6 because your camera's just... It's just so... I mean, he only has 25 CS compared to your 45, so you're probably ahead in net worth by quite a bit. Yeah, you are, but you have to understand, he has to be, like, I don't know, like, 2K right now. You could make him 2k net worth right now, and then you'd be like 4,000. Like, oh, that's how you win Dota, guys. You have to consider your opponents just as much as yourself. And I, I'm afraid to say that because I think some people get caught up in fighting too much, and then their CS drops off as a result. But I'm just telling you, that's what the highest level is. Regardless, moving on, Blitzseeker is really strong in the early game in terms of fighting, right? Uh, especially when you get this, like, wand, wraith band, phase boots build. I had a player who, um, like the spammer I was talking about, who rushed a wand and then instantly maelstrom with no wraith bands and he just fought with us and our first game ended in 14 minutes and the second one in 19 minutes because he just took over the game for us well with us i should say not for us our teammates did well everyone did well by all means like farming this radiance and just ignoring your opponents for the first like 11 minutes is not ever going to gain you mmr like i'm sorry it, it will gain you mmr because you're, you're doing well of farming but realistically if you're gonna play like this dude you should be playing you should be playing naga right if you want to play this AFK style where you're just sort of focused on your own CS, you should play Naga. Not that Bloodseeker's bad, like you're still doing pretty well. What the heck? <laughs> Shadow Amulet Rush. A classic. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, but hopefully you can take that into consideration then. And, oh god, your life stealer's teeping into your lane. Oh, the Echo Saber Rush. Whoa! Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> He's got 94 damage. He's gonna hit you twice for 94. I'm going to end your replay here just because I think I covered the main thing for you. You need to learn how to copy pro item builds because I don't think it's really a good idea to rush Radiance. It's it's okay and people have done it, but I think it's I don't think it's the best. Now, that might just be my personal opinion, but I don't know. I've seen other builds just do so much better the majority of the time. Regardless, getting back to the point here, like you could push out mid. It's just I know the 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 bounties here, so you're maybe a bit afraid, but at the same time like this wave goes under your tower, right? Wave goes under your tower and you're just hitting a neutral creep. Like, this is so inefficient. Oh, you disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Get better internet, kid. All due respect, you do farm pretty well this game. Do you end up winning? Yeah, you end up winning. So, like, your CS performance... Guys, just for everyone out there, you can tell that, like, even though there's a lot lacking in terms of his ability to pressure the opponent and, like, have better camera movement and even, like, touch up his item build, at least in my opinion, it wasn't that bad. Like, that's better than most. So, like, you can even keep going with that and you'll be alright. But for the most part, like... If you can get your CS high and keep your net worth relatively solid, even if you... Okay, eh, this build's alright. You'll win, right? Like, this wasn't perfect, once again, but you'll win if you stick to that formula, right? Stick to CS, stick to net worth, and then eventually move on to fighting is what I recommend. Alright, and last, but certainly not least, we have PK Christian on the Venge. Looks like he'd be playing position 5 this game. And the first thing I had to notice is that you have a branch instead of a clarity. Venge is a hero that has a pretty bad mana pool. It's been buffed a couple times lately, uh, but for the most part, it's a bit bad. It's a bit bad. So I recommend you replace one of these branches with a clarity so you can sustain that mana pool. Moving on, um, I, I don't really recommend Venge, just as like a quick side note. Only because the hero is actually, it's pretty bad in lane. You, you have to, you have like a zero attack range. What is it? 400. It's so bad compared to the majority of heroes. So it's just really hard to trade. Attack range is a big factor in that. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how you play your lane and then and the general things you could change. However, you are one of my students, so I'll be meeting you later, and hopefully we'll be able to break down your problems in depth then. Regardless, let's go over this, because you were in the Discord, and you did submit a replay. First things first, guys. This is a message for everyone. Message for everyone. Stop! Don't go for the rune if it's gonna kill you. Do you hear me? Do not go for the rune if it is going to kill you. It is not worth it. Especially if you were a carry player and you have to burn a... S Even if you get the rune and you don't die, then you have to burn a salve and a tango to heal up, it is not worth it. You are feeding... Let's see. Who does this go to? Looks like it goes to the centaur, probably. Yeah. So he went from... He went from zero gold to bounty runes to 382. Do you think it's a good idea to give someone 382 gold? No, because now he's instantly going to have a stick and a quelling and get off to a really, really good start really really good start it's not worth it at all because when all the net worth goes on to one person they get a severe item advantage right off the bat thankfully for you he's not using it because he doesn't know what he's doing daniel and the centaur bro buy some small items so you can win your laning stage but regardless you can't it's not worth it 
it's not worth it. Talking about the landing stage, unfortunately for Venge, there's close to nothing you can do early on besides like try to deny some creeps and stun for 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 range creeps. Like my first priority, if I was you, is is paying attention to the range creep, which I can't even see because of your camera movement. Like this is all dead space. Just as a side note, similar to the last guy, uh, but this has to be secured. Hopefully the PA gets it. She doesn't. But like that's why if I'm you, I'll even consider taking Wave of Terror just to secure range creeps. Right? Like, guys, it's so important because, frankly, there's not that much you can do right now. There's not. Right? So the main thing you do is secure creeps and denies. Like, people are so confused. They think you just have to, like, insta-kill your opponent at level 1. Like, that's the that's how you get the 7k. You have to learn how to just destroy them. No, that, that's not what happens at all. It's not what happens at all. It's that they secure creeps better than others. Right? That's the difference. And then you just place the ward in vision. You can't do that. You can't place a ward in vision. Like, that's just not allowed. It's just not allowed. Moving on, though. I mean... Honestly, like, I would love to flame you more, because that's who I am. Uh, <laughs> but in reality, your hero is just... Oh, no, you missed a stack. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, okay, I'm glad you went for the stack, but, uh, like, eh, eh. You can hit it earlier. Um, I think, I feel like you hesitated there. Because, oh, no. Okay. This is another reason why you take Web of Terror, right? Sorry, I mean, not to go Venge too Venge specific, because I don't want to go too Venge specific, but, like, it's much, 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 much better uh, to take wave of terror than venture it's a lot more damage if you go on someone and once again you can use it to stack camps right you could get a double stack with wave of terror in the jungle you could get a pull off you can secure creeps it's just so good because it's only 25 mana as well right it's, it's a really low committal all right so you end up pulling i'm glad that you pull it's really good pa is a hero that does not want to lane against centaur so it is it is a good idea for the most part however where are you going go get the creeps like if i'm you i'm trying to get the level like don't go back to lane right just go sap the xp like that's all the XP you're getting. Go sap it. I, I just don't know where you're going. It's that simple, huh? You gave it all to Earthshaker. Like, at least split it with Earthshaker. And then once again here, there, there's really, like, nothing you can do, to be honest. Like, if I'm in your situation here, I'm also not going to be able to kill the Centaur. Like, maybe I can outplay the Shaker with, like, good vision and, and wave of terror movement. But, like, not really. For the most part, you just have to focus on stack pulling, which you, which you do. Um... Quick side note, dude. You're hitting this really late. You can hit it at 53. Both of the small camps, you hit at 53. Oh, you do. Okay, it's just Venge's short attack range. Threw me off. Um, you tried to, at least. Uh, yeah, so, so, I mean, that's good. Because, really, this is the only thing you can do in this lane. So, I mean, if I had to make some main complaints, secure creeps earlier on. Like, as a support, your goal is secure creeps earlier on. Uh, harass if you're able to. Like, if you can sneak in right clicks, by all means, that's fine. And then go for these stack pulls, in my opinion. Also, you're forgetting bounty runes. Uh, <laughs> uh. Eh, uh, not good. Need that, need the bounty runes. And dude, eh! Uh, why do you keep, do you not care about XP? Like, if I'm, a, if I'm a 5, like, when I pull, the reason I pull half the time is just so I can get XP. Like, because I don't want to sap for my carry, but I, wa I still need XP. So if I'm pulling, you're missing so much. Like, you missed an entire camp. Like, that's so much XP, actually, if you, if we go back. And another creep died here, too. Like, it's four creeps of XP. It's a lot. Also, if you get all the CS, it's like 80 gold, which is, you know, either goes towards your stick, your boots, smokes, wards. It's really important. It's really important. Like, you, you can't just sacrifice this. But yeah, I, I'm really going to kind of end this around here, only because I, I really think as a support player, this is what you want to focus on for the most part if you're trying to improve. Like, you just want to have a clean laning stage. And okay, you do Wave of Terror there. You have the right ideas. It's just a bit of... Your execution is quite a bit off right now. Right ideas, execution is just kind of off and... Also, yeah, don't don't pick Venge, guys. Zero's just like, it's just bad. I don't know. It's so bad for solo queue, too, because you can't push in waves. Like, you can wave of terror the wave, which is, it will push it in, but it's really hard to farm them, and it's you don't really scale well. Eh. Adios! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to help our channel grow. I appreciate it, as always. You guys are the bomb. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you. Wait, I don't know what I'm saying, but... Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount guys 25% and start your journey today